Hi, welcome to this episode of Oracle EPM Cloud Today. I'm your host, Katherine Guestry. Today's guest is Matt Bradley, Senior Vice President, EPM Development. Matt will be talking with us today about migrating to Oracle EPM Cloud. We'll talk about why customers should migrate, customers' experiences with migration, and the resources available to help. Stay tuned for all that and more on EPM Cloud today. Hi, I'm Catherine Guestry. Welcome to EPM Cloud Today. Hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I understand you just returned from Dubai. Tell me about your trip. Yeah, we're trying something different this year. So instead of just having one open world at, in San Francisco, we're actually taking open world out into the region. So we've done London. Last week was Dubai. And then uh, in a couple of weeks, we're off to Singapore. So it's great getting out there, meeting with customers, understanding their challenges and interacting and explaining our strategy and roadmap. That sounds exciting. That's great. Good trip to Dubai. Well, let's talk about migration. Why should EPM customers migrate to the Oracle EPM cloud? It's a great question. First of all, we have to be very, very clear. Um, we're not forcing customers to migrate. We still have a long on-premise roadmap and support timeline so that they can stay on-premise if they want to. But in moving to the cloud, there's three things that we like them to consider. One is there's a potential uh, lowering of cost of ownership. There's no more servers, no more data centers, no more upgrades, uh, no more staff to manage and maintain those uh, environments. And so there, there could be some economic value just moving towards a, a SaaS model. Um, the second thing is you can take advantage of some of the best practices that we've developed on the actual platform themselves that enables them to move quicker and faster and become a lot more agile. And then the third reason, um, which we're seeing a lot of value for our customers is they're operating in, a, in an ever-changing environment. There are new regulations, there are new uh, security risks, uh, there are changes in business models, new competition. And with cloud, we're able to deliver innovation much more rapidly than on-premise. And so they can take advantage of that capability on the cloud in order to become a lot more agile. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about leveraging the best practices. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. In the past, in our on-premise, we sort of approached the market from more of a platform standpoint where a customer could build up the logic they wanted for their planning or consolidation applications. And what we've done is, you know, based upon our, our history and our experience, um, we've been at this for a considerable amount of time, is that we wanted to approach the market by having that pre-built. So that rather than starting from a blank sheet of paper, we basically have frameworks in place that customers can then leverage and reduce dramatically their time to value. So in a, in a planning context, as an example, we basically have got a driver-based uh, framework. So instead of building all of that logic, you establish your drivers, establish the relationships to, between the accounts, and you're halfway through your construction of your application. Um, we do something very, very similar in the consolidation space where we provided things like... Um, uh, foreign currency calculations pre-built, uh, the handling of those currency translations with both what we would call CTA and CITA as part of it. We'd also handle things like um, uh, cash flow statements, indirect cash flow, pre-built. Uh, again, really helping organizations uh, move much more quickly through the implementation cycle. Yet it's still customizable, right? They can still fully extend it, yes. So, so what we're slightly different than other organizations in this space is that these are not just implementation accelerators or, or starter kits. Um, they are extensions, they are pre-built content that they can then fully extend. And we recognize the extensions they've done and we recognize the content we've provided. So as we make updates to our content, we can upgrade only our content and leave their extensions in place. So they get the best of both worlds, taking advantage of Oracle as a developer organization to do the construction and then being able to customize and extend further for the very unique requirements that they may have. That sounds like some real advantages for our customers. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of how customers are making the migration to the cloud? Yeah, so the migration is, um, it's always a conversation. Um, it's always trying to ascertain what's the right way to move to the cloud. And we generally see three common patterns. Uh, first and foremost is organizations who are comfortable with the uh, their application, their design, their models. And they can do what we would consider a lift and shift. 
Let's take what we have, move it up onto the cloud, maybe do some functional enhancement. Um, there are a lot more features in cloud than on-premise, so they can then extend it further. May move from, say, a single currency to a multi-currency application, as an example. So that's number one. Number two is organizations who may not want to necessarily disrupt what they have, but they have a new initiative. Uh, they may want to roll out a, a more operational style planning application, as an example, and maybe move that first to the cloud, then get familiar with how the cloud works, you know, how we do our backups, how we run the operations, how updates occur, so that they're comfortable with that new working model, and then move their existing uh, investment from on-premise to cloud. And in the third group is those organizations who basically arrived at a point where what they have is fundamentally stale and they need a transformation. They need to really rethink how they're doing things and leverage the shift to cloud as, as a way of, uh, of really reinvesting and, and reimagining how they're actually going to handle the repm processes. Well, so there's a lot of different options and ways options. the customers can move forward. That's great. It'll make it easier for our customers. What kind of roadblocks are customers expressing concerns about, though, and how is Oracle addressing those? Yeah, so we basically hear, th I would say, three sort of high-level ro roadblocks or, or concerns. Um, first and foremost is it's, it's a change, and it's a change from a user inter interface standpoint. We have simplified the interface dramatically to, to make it more easier to roll out and absorb. Um, so there is some concerns about that level of interaction and getting comfortable with that. Um, Obviously, there's a change in terms of ownership. Oracle is now responsible for backups. Oracle is now responsible for securing the environments and patching, et cetera. So it's getting used to that particular model. And also, there's there's always that kind of uh, um, thought on their minds as we do things this way. Can we do everything that we can do on-premise still in the cloud? And uh, obviously, getting to uh, what we would consider feature coverage and ensuring that, yes, everything that you can do on-premise is available in the cloud. We may, may do it in a slightly different fashion, um, but it is all available there. So that's sort of one of the, the big things is dealing with, with change. Um, the other big question we always get from customers is how secure is the cloud? Because we are taking sensitive, yeah. sensible, or sensitive financial information and moving that into the cloud, and they want to make sure that it's secure, et cetera, from that standpoint. And you know, the advantage that Oracle brings to the table is that we own everything from the ground up you know, from the data centers to the machines to all of the staff that runs and operates it. And so they can be very comfortable that we do, you know, uh, approach their confidentiality and, and, and access to the information very highly. And we do operate a very, very secure cloud so they can be comfortable moving that sensitive data uh, across to, to an Oracle cloud. And in the last issue that we do get a little bit of, of uh, a concern on is, is obviously our continuous innovation. And it's not something they're used to in an on-premise world. So we provide updates on a fairly regular basis in how do customers handle that pace of change. And we've done things in the applications to make that easier to absorb. It's things like uh, fully self-service test to production, uh, change management. So I can take an artifact from test and move it into production, or I can take a complete clone of production and move that back into the test environment. So you can manage change as it comes through from that fashion, either from Oracle as we patch the software, or for that matter, if they make logical changes to their application. The other piece that we do provide are things like automated regression testing, so that as you apply the updates into your pre-production environment, you can test it and be comfortable that um, nothing untoward has occurred as part of the, uh, the process itself. So there is a little bit of a, of a mindset shift that needs to occur. And the other thing that the customers need to bear in mind is, in the on-premise world, we would spend three to four years producing a lot of change. In cloud, it's a change on a much more regular basis. So therefore, the level of change, update to update, is different than the level of change they would have experienced in a traditional on-premise style model. So those things do help uh, smooth some of the concerns that the customers have raised. That's great. It sounds like you're trying to build in some tools to make it easier exactly. once yeah. they have migrated. Yeah. All right, so how long should we should a customer expect the migration to take? Good question. That it really depends. If we go back to your earlier question, we've got three styles. So obviously, if you're doing a, a lift and shift, it tends to be quicker than if you're doing a full transformation. So it really will depend on your, your approach. Um, the other factor is really scope. You know, are you doing a fairly simple you know, financial uh, plan or you're taking a much more broader operational style plan? 
the same thing happens on consolidation. Are you, you know, wholly owned subsidiary? Or are you basically a conglomerate with lots of legal entities and ownership rules, like joint ventures, et cetera, et cetera? So it really depends on that scope. Um, and then it depends on, on the last factor is what percentage of the pre-built content can you leverage? And obviously, the higher that percentage, the shorter the time the implementation would ultimately be. Factoring in those three elements, we would expect and have seen planning applications typically are in the 12 to 15 weeks start to finish. So fairly rapid. Consolidation tends to be a little longer. Um, we generally see about a three-month construction and then a month parallel where I'm running my old system and comparing the results of the new system. And once we're comfortable uh, and gotten through that parallel run, they then move across to full production. So, you know, there are several factors, but, um, you know, it can be fairly rapid. These aren't multi-year style projects. So, sounds like there's a, a big range. Depending on your implementation, it's much faster than an on-premise Yes, definitely faster implementation. Than on yes. And, and again, it's the advantage that we have over some of our competition is that pre-built content that you can then leverage and, and remove that construction phase from from a rollout, and it's really is configuration at that point, rather than you know heavy duty scripting that may need to be done by uh, some of the competition. What resources does Oracle provide to customers to help migrate to the EPM cloud? Okay, so what we provide is is a kind of a full range of of uh, resources. So we would start obviously with the white paper, so that you can get familiar with your options, what you need to consider, some of the um, things to plan out, so that it is as successful as it can be. Um, we also provide a uh, cost of ownership calculator so that you can then build the business case um, to really help organizations through that process in terms of making that investment and, and moving across to the cloud. And then at a more, I would say, mechanical level, we do provide a series of utilities. So the ability to extract from your on-premise application the appropriate artifacts, your rules, your forms, your definitions, your reports, and move those up onto the cloud and then rehydrate it into the cloud environment. So we do have capabilities across the broad spectrum of, of EPM to help customers move through that process. And then the last thing that we have done from an Oracle standpoint is working with um, Oracle Consulting is rolled out at the SOAR program, um, which is a program that is really geared towards automating as much as we can through that process. Um, fixed price bid that really help customers move fairly quickly and economically up onto the cloud. To soar into the cloud. To soar into the cloud, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And then, you know, in working with our partners, a lot of our partners also have got rapid um, implementation templates where they can move you fairly aggressively from on-premise to cloud. So a lot of work has been gone into try to make this be as smooth as we can and, and get you into the, the new world of, of SaaS. That sounds great, Matt. Our customers have a lot of resources available to them. I really want to thank you for talking with us today about migrating to EPM Cloud. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time for the next episode of EPM Cloud Today.